Well, welcome to KDHX Studio C. My name is Roy Kasten. I'm joined here with Luke Doucette and Melissa McClellan of the band White Horse. Welcome to St. Louis and KDHX. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, it's nice having you here, and you're in town for a show. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the technically a new band, even though the two of you have been together for some time, married now five years. Yep. Right? Going on and six. Going almost. on six. And you've been making music for a long time. I don't know if you can talk about why you decided to officially christen this union as a band. Um, yeah, I mean, we've been playing separately um, for years now, and uh, but we've always been so involved in each other's music, um, from live shows to the recording studio, Luke producing my records, me playing in his band. Um, and then we had done a lot of tours, just the two of us, um, under both of our names, just kind of passing songs back and forth. And it really just got to the point where it made the most sense to join forces because we we obviously love playing together and there was great chemistry and uh, people really responded to it. So we just thought, you know what, let's let's try it out. Let's make a record. Um, and then the more we got into it, um, the more we realized that it wasn't going to be a side project, that this is exactly what we needed to do. So it's been good so far, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we're probably, we both realized kind of slowly uh, that we were each other's strongest musical assets and that we could we can work alone we can work independently and we have and we probably will to some degree again but um i can't think of a situation where my music hasn't been improved by melissa's contributions and i think that's probably true if you had to go the other way too so mm -hmm. it just seemed like well why would we not do this if we can do this and if, the, if it makes the music better and then we don't have to you know being on the uh, the practical considerations of course are that we're both professional musicians, and I use all, both of those terms lightly, but we are. Um, uh, and that means you work all the time, means you're on the road all the time. And if we weren't working together all the time, we'd be apart all the time. So, I mean, there, there, there are so many reasons for us to do this, and, and so few not to. You know, Of course, the big one is the the cardinal rule that you don't mix business and pleasure, and you don't work mm -hmm. with your wife, and you don't, you know. <laughs> but given the kind of work we do, if, if we obeyed that rule, we'd never see each other. Yeah, right. it's a very unique life, you know, so there's really no way around those kind of things, you know. Our life is the road, our life is music, um, so there is no separation to begin with. So um, yeah. we we kind of have to do what it takes to make it work, yeah. and it does. So. Can't ch separation of church and state's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, last year released the uh, self-titled album, mm -hmm. and uh, White Horse, and uh, he actually wrote all the songs on it except for one, Bruce Springsteen yeah. cover of uh, I'm on Fire. And uh, I don't know if you can talk a little bit about writing songs together. Yeah, I mean, we don't write songs together in, in the traditional sense where, you know, people imagine two people sitting down with a bottle of wine and two guitars. I don't think we've ever done it that way. No, it's always bourbon. <laughs> it's always bourbon. No, but we, you know, we... We write separately. It's a pretty uh, private process for both of us. And then and then we come together with ideas and, um, you know, Luke will play a little guitar thing and I'll sit with it for a while or I'll send him some lyrics and he'll work with those. Um, we've done a lot of writing in the studio as we're recording. We're finishing up songs. And um, and then, of course, there are songs that, that I wrote alone and that Luke wrote alone. So there's really no... Uh, there are no rules that we go by. We just yeah. kind of um, do what we can to come up with the best songs. So whatever yeah. it takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things I, I like about the record is just the, the mix of sounds and styles that you take. The, the classic country music and early rock and roll and a lot of gospel and blues in it as yeah. well. But it doesn't sound like a sort of vintage throwback right. kind of sound. It's very, it's very modern. It's kind of mm -hmm. got a punch to it. I don't know if you can talk a little bit about... Just, I don't know how you maybe got that in the recording process. Uh, you know, for the trying to the the, the sort different sources that you hear, if you're hearing country and blues and, and early rock and roll and stuff, I mean, um, you know, those are the, I can't imagine making music that 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 wouldn't involve those elements. Just because I grew up at it in in the early '70s, my parents were were music lovers, and so I, there was Tom Waits and Willie Nelson and. Hank Williams and Johnny Cash and and Neil Young and the Beatles and the Stones and Randy Newman those things were just around my in my in my face all the time. Um, so you know when 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 I think about um, 
blues today, I think about the evolution of the blues and what it once was and what it is today, I, I think a lot of people still have kind of an antiquated idea about what the music is, is supposed to be. I think if you listen to a Tom Waits record, you're hearing very modern blues. And what I mean by modern is that this sounds, I mean, he's pulled those right off, off Howlin' Wolf records. He's pulled that, that sound, the, the sort of junkyard, falling down the elevator shaft sound off Howlin' Wolf records. And, but yet his, the narrative and the stories are really modern. And I think that if you look at somebody like, like Beck or you look at Los Lobos or you look at Calexico or Tom Waits, you've got these artists who are, who are telling current modern American stories. Mm. But the backdrop to those stories is something very... Um, recognizable as part of the sort of fabric of Ameri the American folk arts. Uh, yeah, I, I have to say too that those styles of music are just a lot of fun to play live too. And that's been a big draw for me yeah. um, because, you know, I've, I've written a lot of pop music throughout my life and, and I love pop music, um, but I find it pretty restrictive when it comes to playing live. Um, you're kind of boxed in to, to the, the melodies and um, you can't really play with it too much. And so I find with these styles, there's a lot of liberties you can take and, and so much freedom and you can really lose yourself in it. Um, so that's been the biggest draw for me is just the, um, just how much fun it is to get up on stage and, and, yeah. and start singing and playing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think our audience may be aware that uh, you're technically based out of Canada, but mm -hmm. currently living in New York, New York City. City. And uh, I don't know if you can tell me about just sort of touring and, and living in Canada. And there's, it seems like there's a real sort of support for um, touring musicians and independent musicians uh, in your home country. Can you talk a little bit about yeah. that? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Canada is, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the great socialist menace to the north. <laughs> <clears throat> and what that means is that the government and therefore the taxpayers' money will go towards supporting the arts in a, in a different kind of way. Um, there are bodies of, there are funding bodies that, that make sure that musicians have more of a chance to maybe go on the road and play music and, and fewer, um, fewer chances to wash dishes and work at Starbucks. Um, so what that means is this over time, like 20 years ago, I remember going on the road when I was a, t a teenager, um, and, I mean, maybe not quite 20 years ago, dating myself. <laughs> <clears throat> and I remember you'd say, well, we're from Canada, and people would make jokes. They'd make jokes about Celine Dion, and they'd make Brian Adams jokes, and that was kind of the end right. of it, right? And, and now they don't anymore. Now it's like, no, no, that can, that, that can, mean, that can be a serious thing. They're, they're thinking Ron Sexsmith, they're thinking Feist, they're Arcade thinking Fire. Arcade Fire. Mm -hmm. The list is endless right now of, of acts come out of Canada that are world class. Yeah. And are not only world class in terms of they can do business in the stadiums and they can sell records, but they can influence the zeitgeist of music. Yeah. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that there's some funding money out there. But there's an argument to be made that, that you know, socialism promotes mediocrity. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't agree necessarily, <laughs> but I'm just saying that gets, that gets bandied out. Yeah. Right. And uh, the last time, uh, it's been a while since the two of you have been here in St. Louis. Last time you were in town with uh, Sarah McLaughlin, which mm -hmm. you uh, mentioned before, and you were in town actually doing a project on Route 66. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can talk a little bit about that. I've always been drawn to the route, and um, I, was, I was kind of burnt out on the road. I was tired of just getting from point A to point B and not seeing anything in between. Um, I love a good road trip, and I want to... I wanna, you know, take the other route and, and see what's out there. Um, so this was an idea that I had to um, document the Route 66 and basically take my show on the road in a totally new way. So instead of playing bars and clubs, um, we would dr be driving along the route and we would see some spectacular site, like the, the Chain of... Chain of, of Rocks Bridge. Chain of Rocks mm -hmm. Bridge, which is one of the sites that we stopped at. And uh, I would get out with my guitar, we'd have a little mic clipped on me, and I would perform one of my songs. Um, and we drove the entire route, and I did, I don't know how many songs, maybe between eight and 12 songs. Um, but we also um, interviewed people and documented the entire route. So we put it together as a documentary, and I'm, I'm really proud of it. It's called Pedal to Steel, and it's, it's a little treasure of mine. Uh, it's probably worth pointing out that Melissa was born in, in Chicago mm -hmm. and, yeah. and that her mom's family are all in California. Yeah. So there's a lot of family history that runs along Route 66 for, for you. Absolutely. Right? Actually, my, my mom and I took another trip across Route 66. So I've driven the route twice now. 
And we um, researched my ancestral line, um, which is all through, started off in Pike County, which is not too far from here. So Quincy and mm -hmm. um, Pittsfield, I think it is. Mm -hmm. So we stayed there. We did, you know, spent time in the libraries, going through books, walking through cemeteries, going to the county courthouse. Um, so that was pretty amazing. And we, it took us clear across the country as well. Great, yeah. great. Well, uh, thanks again for coming down to the uh, KDHX studios. It's been yeah, a pleasure having us. you here. And uh, we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thanks a lot.